Ay, ay, ay. Okay, everybody. Hazak Ubaruch. And good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Monday evening as we are studying together Prikavot. Here we are, chapter 4, Nu Mishnah, Mishnah, either your Gimel 13 or 11, depending on the version that you are using. Let us share the screen, and here we go. Do we all see the shared screen? Can we get a thumbs up? Beautiful. Here it is, Mishnah number 11 slash 13. The author of today's Mishnah, Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov Omer. Let's read the Mishnah. We're just going to read a line or two, and then we'll explain. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov Omer, Pirkei Avot, chapter 4, Mishnah 11 or 13. Ha'oseh mitzvah ahat. Somebody who performs a mitzvah. Kone lo praklit ehad. Acquires for himself or herself a Praklit. We have to see what that means. Ha'over avera ahat, and if one does a sin, konelo kategor ehad. They acquire for themselves a kategor. Teshuva o maasim tovim, and teshuva and good deeds, kitris, bifne hapuranut, are like a shield against retribution. So let us stop over here and we'll explain. So basically, Rabbi Yezir ben Yaakov is telling us that. Whoever fulfills a mitzvah gains a praklit. What's a praklit? A praklit, the mefarshim say, is an advocate, um, a defense attorney. And if somebody, God forbid, does an avera, then they as well acquired for themselves not a defense attorney, but a kategor. A kategor is a prosecuting attorney. It's actually, according to many opinions, Greek. For categories. Anyone speak Greek? No. The only thing that we know about Greek is that they have great yogurt. Right? <laughs> okay. So anyways, in Greek, kategoris means... I don't speak Greek. I saw this written down. Don't, don't worry about it. And it means a prosecutor or a complainant. So if you do a mitzvah, you're going to get a defense attorney. If you do an avera, you're going to get a kategor a prosecuting attorney against us. Okay, that is what the Mishnah is saying. And it's a beautiful Mishnah, much depth today to delve into. On a very uh, simple level, the Mishnah is telling us, our actions, our actions, Rabotai, are the witnesses that will accompany us to the next world. Who's the witness in Shamayim that's going to say if I did good or bad? I'm going to take with me uh, Alan Dershowitz? No. Your witness is your mitzvah. I have nothing against Alan Dershowitz. He's a great lawyer. But he's not going to take, he's not, he's not going to come with me to heaven. My, my lawyer will be my mitzvah and my prosecuting attorney will be my avera. And therefore we should not be little mitzvot. Every mitzvah is another angel. The more mitzvot, the more angels. There is a beautiful story, Rabotai, I have to share with you. And I think this will be the title of today's class. We'll see as we get towards the end. I'm feeling this though as the title. And this is the famous mashal of a man's three friends. Once upon a time, there was a man that had three friends. One loved him deeply and he loved him. And he spent as much time as possible with him. The second one was not quite as intimate, but nonetheless maintained a close relationship with him. And the third was a friend merely as an acquaintance. One day the man was summoned to court and he was very afraid. He wanted someone to come with him to this very important trial in front of the king. Terrified, he asked his very dear friend, can you please come with me to trial? And the friend looks at him and says to his surprise, I'm sorry, I cannot come with you. And he refuses. The man is very sad, very down. He cannot believe it. He just got rejected by his best friend. Afraid of being alone, he goes to his second friend. And he says, can you please strengthen my spirits? Can you accompany me on this trek to the, to the king's palace, to court? The second friend says, listen, I'll accompany you to the palace, but I'm not coming in with you. I'm afraid of being seen by the king. I don't want him to see me. I also have a bad record. I don't want to come. And finally, fearful for his life with no other options, he asks his casual acquaintance, can you please accompany me to the trial, to a very important day? And the third friend, to his surprise, says, I understand you. I know your, pred your predicament. I am ready to help you out. Not only, don't worry, not only will I come with you, 
but I will personally come into the king and plead your case on your behalf. This is a beautiful mashal. And the nimshal rabotai is that a man has three friends. The first friend is our money. A person spends this whole life breathing money, thinking about money. The second they wake up, how much of it will I make? The stocks crash today. I can't believe it. What will be tomorrow? Should I, should, I, should I short my stocks? Should I double down? What should I do, right? All day long, we're thinking about money. We spend our life and energy in, to, to pursue, in the pursuit of money, to attain more of it, to protect it. All we do is think about money, money, money. That's our best friend. And it's at the, even at the expense sometimes of our friends and family. We put aside our children. We put aside important things in life because I got to make money. And I, I need to make money. And so the first friend that a man has, his best friend, so to speak, is money. And when he will arrive, when a person will arrive at the final reckoning, at the gates of heaven after 120 when a person will go to Shamaim and the most important and the only court case that matters in our lives, that's the only one that really matters ultimately, is the one that's going to be after 120. A person will turn to his best friend and say, Money, come with me. Maybe I could use you. You'll help me. I'll bribe. I'll try to take a good judge. A good. The money will laugh and say, What are you talking about? We cannot come with you. We cannot come with you. We're sorry. We stay here. Second, a man will then have no choice. He'll turn to his family, who unfortunately is reduced to a secondary role in his concerns in his lifetime. Nonetheless, they love him. No matter how much a person ignored his family, his kids, they will love him and they want to help him as much as they can. However, they know also they cannot come to the next world. They could accompany us to our burial. They accompany a man to the gates of, of the palace. But that's it. More than that, it's too late. I cannot come with you further. And they stop there. And with no other choice, a man finally turns to the mitzvot, to the tzedakah, to the Torah that we learned. And we say, will you accompany me? You know, I, didn't, I wasn't so proud of you. I didn't give you as much time maybe as I should have. I only spent an hour a day with you as opposed to my family, as opposed to my money. Uh, maybe you'll come with me. And the mitzvot jump up and down and say, Yes! Yes, we are here. We will come with you. We will fight for you. We will defend you to the death to make sure that you get the best verdict possible. And these mitzvot are what testify on our behalf. Rabotai, it's true in mitzvot and it's true as well with averot. We need to remember that our Averot will be prosecuting our, against us. They are the prosecuting attorney. Matter of fact, says Resh Lakish in the Gemara, Hu HaMalach, Hu HaYetzerara, Hu HaSatan, Hu Malach HaMavet. I'll translate. He is the evil inclination, a.k.a. the angel of death, a.k.a. Satan. It is all the same person. First, he comes to entice us. And he says here, Come on, do this sin. Eat this food. Say this thing. Watch that. Do this. Act like that. Have these feelings. And we accept and we follow and we eat and we obey. And then that same, that same wicked Yetzirara, he takes the Averot that we did, he takes those angels, he rides up to the heavens and he says, God, look, Look what he did against you. And he serves as the prosecuting attorney. Fighting against us to kill us, to cause us the most pain as possible. And once God agrees and says, okay, you're right, he's guilty. He runs down and he issues the verdict as fast as possible. As the angel of death, as the Malach mavit, To our demise, to our death. And therefore, warns us in Ishla Akish, we have to be very, very careful. Think about your Averot. Every Avera that we do, we're acquiring for ourselves another Kategor, another prosecuting attorney. We don't need more against us. We need more defense angels. We need more mitzvot protecting us. Matter of fact, there's something very deep over here. We usually think of Averot and, and Onashim as punishments, 
right? As uh, I did an Avera and now I get punished, right? That's usually how we think about it, right? I did something wrong and now God is going to punish me. But we have to remember something very, very important. God doesn't need to get even. God is not affected by my Averot that he now is like, oh, look what you did to me. Ah, and now I'm going to pay you back. Hashem doesn't need to pay back. He's not affected. He cannot be affected. He is perfect in perfection. Nothing that we do can alter his state of being. So what's a punishment for? Why punish me? When you do something to me, I punish you because it's not nice. I want to get even. I want to make sure you don't do it again. When Hashem punishes, it's not, it's not a punishment. The Sfarim write more, it's really a consequence. Beautiful. Exactly. It's a consequence. You wrote it before me. Don't worry, I saw. It's a consequence. Just like when you sit in the sun and you get sunburned. Is that a punishment? Not a punishment. It's a consequence. It's a result of being exposed to the sun. So too when a person does an Avera, the way God created the world was that the Averot create a consequence, sometimes in this world, sometimes in the next, but it's nonetheless a consequence of our actions. And therefore, we have to be very careful because we are creating, with every, every negative deed, we are creating an angel. And this is a very scary thought. Because we think, again, of Gehenam, we think of all of these things as a fire, as a place of heat, as a place of punishment. Rabotai, Gehenam is much, much scarier than fire. Much scarier than fire. What could be scarier than fire? My mother-in-law? <laughs> much scarier than fire? You know what Gehenam is? Gehenam, we're going to get to Shamayim after 120. We're going to be standing in the front of the gates of heaven. And they're going to say, Rabbi Mizrahi, have a seat, sit down, grab your popcorn. We're going to show you a beautiful movie. Oh, which movie? Karate Kid? I didn't see that in a long time. I would really... No, 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 not Karate Kid. Maybe, um, maybe Batman or Superman. I, I didn't really get to see those. They only came out after... I flipped and I became all from no, 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 not, not Superman. So which, which movie? Which movie, Hashem? It's a movie called Ariel Mizrahi. Come sit back and watch. And they're going to play our entire lives on this huge screen. And every second of our lives is going to be projected and we're going to watch every single act. Acts that were done in private. Acts that we thought no one would see. Acts that we were covered with in the bathroom, alone, on vacation, far from people. Our deepest thoughts. It's going to be a movie not only of what we did. It's going to have a commentary, the bubble coming out of our heads of what we were thinking. It's an x-ray movie. Everything that we did in our lives, they're going to be showing it to us. And the embarrassment. But Abotai, you know what's the scariest part? is that the theater is going to be filled with our friends and family and our community. And everyone that we saw, everyone that we knew, everyone that respected us, they're going to see us and they're going to say, what, this is you? This is what you did? That feeling, the most embarrassing feeling. I don't know if you ever got embarrassed. I hope not. But if you ever got embarrassed, right? The heat, just we want to be better, times that by a billion not for a minute, not for 10 hours or 100 hours, forever. That's Gehenna. That's the, that's the angels that we create. Again, a consequence, not a punishment. We are creating our own Olam Haba slash Gehenna with the mitzvot and the averot that we do. And a person has to be very, very careful. The Baal Shem Tov one time, he saw a person speaking inappropriately in his sukkah. Afterwards, he met the guy a day later and he said, tell me something. How could it be that you spoke, a guy like you, you spoke Lashon Hara in the Sukkah. You spoke inappropriate in the Sukkah, a guy of your stature. The man said, Rabbi, who told you this? I can't believe someone told you. He says, you know who told me? An angel came over to me and told me. 
He said, come on, Rabbi, an angel. Angels don't speak Lashon Hara. An angel would never squeal on me like that. And the Habal Shem Tov says, it depends. The Mishnah says in Perkei Avot, that if you do a good deed, you create a good angel. But if you do a bad deed, you create a negative angel. You did a very bad deed. You created a negative angels. Those negative angels do speak Lashon Hara. And that's how I heard. The Chafetz Chaim was just trying to create this concept, the awareness, how real it is of a bad angel. And we have to be very, very careful when we get to Shamayim, what kind of angels will be there to greet us. That simple. You do a mitzvah, you get a, uh, a, prak, a praklit. You do an avira, you get a kategor. You get a prosecuting attorney. Um, and, and that is what a person needs to remind themselves every, every second. And the more we think about this, the more we're able to make sure that we do mitzvot and that we stay away from avirot. Ramchal writes Rav Moshe Chaim Rotzato in, the, in his magnum opus, Mesilat Yesharim. Masterpiece. Says the Ramchal, a person has many motivations to do good or to stay away from bad. One motivation is, I want to attain perfection of character. Like Hashem. That's the highest level, by the way. And if we could reach that level, amazing. This level, this level is very powerful. This is the highest level that a person can reach. What's your motivation, sir? You want to get reward? No, I don't want reward. You want to, you, you're afraid of punishment? No, I don't care about punishment. I want to be perfect, like Hashem. And I know if I follow the Torah, I'll be close to Hashem as possible. That's my motivation. That's an amazing level. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we should reach that level one day. We've spoken about this level many times. Second level, the level that most of us are probably on, at least myself, and that is we're doing mitzvot because we want to get honor. We're doing mitzvot because we want reward. We stay away from averot because we're afraid of getting punished. Says Ramhal, this is also great. This is fine. And by the way, this alone should be enough to shake a person that they should never sin. This alone, if a person thought and understood and internalized that every single Avera that I do is recorded, is being watched. How could a person ever sin? How could a person ever do wrong? Every deed creates an angel and there's no freebies. There's no such thing as protectia in Shamayim. There's no such thing as connections. I know many of us think that when we get to Shamayim, we're going to be tight with God. Like, no, Hashem knows me. Hashem loves me. I am the poster child. In Shamayim, God has a picture of me on his desk and behind his chair. I, God understands me. He knows me. He appreciates my challenges. He's going he's gonna to forgive me. We're, we have a, an amazing relationship, me and God. I, I'm okay. Right? That's how we think. Can I ask you a question? Is there anyone that's tighter with Hashem than Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu, are you tighter with God? No, no one's closer than Moshe. Says the Ramchal, Moshe got punished for his Avedot. Abraham Avinu, he's tight with God or no? He's tight with God. Did God forgive him for his Avedot? Abraham got punished. When he says to God, how do I know? How do I know I'm going to inherit Israel? He was punished. 400 years, slavery in Egypt. Yaakov Avinu. He, he does a sin. He gets punished. Yosef gets punished. Everybody. No such thing as a freebie. Every deed is going to create an angel. Now, now, you may be getting very scared and you may be asking yourself, but Rabbi, what about Teshuvah? Where does Teshuvah come in all of this? That's a fantastic question. That's a question that we will address tomorrow. Okay? But the fact is, and, and it's, it's really the continuation of the Mishnah. But the fact is, before Teshuvah, 
Every single act that we do creates a malach, and a person has to know that. Even the tzaddikim were punished, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is medakdek, and with them he's even more precise, and he's more careful. And so if they don't have anything that, that slides by the, you know, sometimes you sneak into a, you can sneak into a, into a park, you know, Six Flags, you're not going to buy kosher food over there. So you take kosher food, you know, the bamba and the pretzel, you know what I'm saying? And you put it under your shirt, you put it under the stroller, you get all creative, how to sneak in bamba. Okay, maybe you could sneak in bamba into, uh, through the security of Six Flags. They're not, uh, they're not the IDF, you know what I'm saying? But in Shamaim, nothing, nothing could sneak through. A person has to know that in Shamaim, every, every, every single one is recorded. The Averot and the Mitzvot create angels, Rabotai. And not only that, but the better quality my Mitzvah is, the better quality my angel is. There's a Gemara, Masechet Chulim, page 7, Zayin Amud Bet. Maybe you've read this Gemara before. I'm going to read you the Gemara and then I'll translate it. The Gemara says that the Jewish people, the Jewish people are very holy. Okay, sounds good. Hit me. What is it that we do that's so holy? Says the Gemara, very simple. The Jewish people are so holy. Some of them want to give. They want to do good. But they don't have the means to give. And some of them have the means. But don't want to. How, how does that prove the holiness of the Jewish people? The ones that want to give but can't, and the ones that do give but don't want to. Says Rav Zusha Me'anapoli, a fantastic chidush. Says Rav Zusha like this, I never knew this. And, but, and, and this is a big chidush, when you hear it, you'll understand why it's such a novel idea. Every act, every act that we do, every mitzvah act, right now you're doing a mitzvah. You are creating angels every second. Every word. Maybe you should hope that I speak very fast. The more fast, I right? Maybe you should speak very fast. Rabbi, come on. Next time you're going to play me on 2.0 speed. <laughs> Maybe some of you do that already. Um, but the, 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 the more we learn, the more mitzvot we do. So the mitzvah that you're doing right now, you're creating the body of the angel. But like people, angels have body, but they also have soul. What's the soul of the angel? What's the neshama of the angel? The neshama is the feelings that went into the mitzvah. The thought that went into a mitzvah. So the mitzvah creates the body, and the quality of the mitzvah creates the soul. You understand? Some people do the mitzvah, but there's zero feeling. They do it like a robot. Right? They do it like a robot. Some people... They do the mitzvah with great feeling, great concentration. Some people do the concentration, but they don't do the actual mitzvah. For example, a person that says, Ach, I wish I could learn today, but I can't. I have to be for this occasion. I have that event. I have that party. I have to go to. And they're inside. They're so upset. Let me tell you something. That's very valuable to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Don't belittle that thought of wanting to do good. Even the thought is amazing. You ready for this? Says Rav Zusha. One Jew all the way in New York learns, but he's distracted. He's not so excited. He's praying, but he's thinking about his vacation. He's doing the tzedakah, but he really doesn't want to. He's being kind of pulling teeth out of him to give him to give a few dollars to charity. So he created the angel, but there's no soul. You have another Jew all the way in Israel that wanted to give but he can't, he's tight, doesn't have money extra this month to give. And he wanted to pray, but he couldn't pray. He wanted to learn, but he couldn't sit down and learn, occupied. And Hashem takes the, the soul of this one and the body of this one and creates a perfect angel. That's a very, very beautiful Hidush. But that only works if there's Arvut, if there's love, if there's Ahadut between two Jews. Because I could only take that Jew's other half if I love that Jew. 
if I'm separated from Jews because I hate and I always talk and I embarrass and I make fun of Jews and I divide Jews and I'm saying this Jew is too left, this Jew is too right and I'm labeling every Jew in the world, I'm not going to be able to connect to the other Jews. And therefore, that's how Rav Zusha explains the idea of creating an angel that's perfect. It's my half and your half and together we create a beautiful angel. Right? I love you, you love me, we're a happy family. That's, uh, Barney knew this already from uh, many years ago. Sadiq Barney. Okay. One more point, Abotai. When we go to court, when we go to court, we need to know something. If you were taken to court, God forbid, imagine, and you had very scary, um, uh, um, uh, there were very scary uh, judgments against us. Allegations. And we were, we were told that we have this date and we're going to be defending ourselves and we're looking at probably 10, 15 years in jail. Would anyone not spend every penny they had to get the best and only best lawyer out there? 100%. The best lawyer. What did I talk about? My life's on the line. I don't want to spend the next 20 years of my life in jail. I'm going to get the best lawyer. I want to make sure... Forget about, forget about life on the line. The guy's fighting a $150 ticket for, 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 the, for his car being caught by the... The guy's crying, Vidu, Ashamnu, cry, Hashem, please, the best lawyer asking 35 people, do you know anyone? For 150 bucks. Imagine you fighting for your life in Shamayim. That's a little bit more serious. I think we could agree that's a little bit more serious. Yeah? The Sfarim tell us, our Mishnah reminds us that when we go to Shamayim, you know who's going to be your lawyer? Your mitzvah. You want to have the best lawyer or you want to have a hazi okay lawyer? A nebach lawyer? Who wants anything less than perfect? You want the best of the best. The best lawyer? Well, you better make sure you have the best mitzvot. Says the Chafetz Chaim, how sad would it be if a person gets to Shamayim and he's going to see a whole room of angels waiting for him, for his court case. And he's going to get to Shamayim and he's going to see hundreds of strong, beautiful, tall lawyers. And then he's going to see a whole bunch of crippled lawyers in wheelchairs, on crutches. He's going to need to bring a doctor with him to heal all of the angels. Call me Dr. Fauci. I got a bunch of angels I need you to heal. You know what I'm saying? Imagine you get to Shamayim and you see all the strong angels. Who are these strong angels? Ah, these are your Averot. Come look, look how you did this Avera. You were sleeping. You were almost out for the night. All of a sudden you got up with such energy to go do this Avera. That's a very powerful angel. You created a very strong Avera angel. Look at you. You were praying Friday night, Arbit, it's 5 p.m. You usually sleep at 1 a.m. 5 p.m. You're already dozing off like, you're, like you can't keep your eyes up. What's, what's the, this, is the, this is the Friday night Arbit angel that you created. The guy's limping. He has a cast on. He has corona. I don't know what the angel has. This is what the angel has. When we create angels with our mitzvot that are lacking, the, the, the angel will be lacking. And so this is amazing Musar Rabotai. Amazing Musar. Very strong, very strong today. How careful we have to be that our mitzvot, our, our mitzvot should be impeccable. Creating only the best of the best angels. The best lawyers we need. Our Averot, to keep them to a minimum. The Pasuk says, and we'll end with this from the famous uh, Peha Kadosh. The Peha Kadosh writes by the Akedat Yitzchak. Hashem tells Abraham, take his son and I want you to sacrifice him. Abraham takes his son after three days, goes to Har Moriah, and he's up there on the mountain and he's ready to sacrifice his son. And the angel cries and says, Abraham, Abraham, don't do it. I know Atayadati. Now I know. That you are God-fearing. And you did not keep your, your child from me. Says the Peah Kadosh. You know what the deeper understanding of this, of this Pasuk is? The angel says, Abraham, 
You perform this mitzvah with perfection. Your thoughts, your kavanah, you're completely devoting yourself to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I already know you would sacrifice everything to me. You don't have to kill your son. You don't have to sacrifice him. I know already that you did it with perfection. You know how I know. Mimeni, says the Malach. Look at me. Look how perfect I am. Look how strong I am. Mimeni, from me you could prove I am the mitzvah that was created. From your Akedat Yitzchak. Body and soul complete. May we be zocher abotai to follow in the footsteps of Avraham Avinu. That um, our mitzvot should be perfect. To remember every day of our lives that every mitzvah we do we're creating an angel. And we need to remember we're creating angels every second. The question is what kind of angels are we creating? That choice is ours. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.